start out. We want to wake everybody up. Turn to your neighbor and say, wake up. <laughs> because one of these days, one of these days, we're going to take flight. We're going to fly. Hallelujah. I'm going to fly away. Let's rejoice this morning as we worship the Lord. Well, some glad morning when the sun is over, I fly away to the world on God's lips for sure.
today. We thank you for who you are. We give praise and honor and glory to your name, and we're thankful that soon and very soon, Lord, you're coming. And Lord, we just give you praise and glory and honor for all of your blessings upon each and every one of us. We come into your presence today, and we just lift up all of those that are in need today. We pray, Lord, for Edward, that you would touch him and minister healing in his body today. Father, we pray for Bill, that you would touch him and just strengthen him and undergird him by your might and power. For Scott, we pray, God, that you continue to touch him and bring healing in his body. We thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we lift up Denise to you today, and we pray, God, that you would touch her, bring healing in her body. We just thank you, and Lord, we give praise to you for what you're going to do. For Ms. Esther, Lord, fill that room where she is. May she just sense your peace, your presence, your sweet, sweet spirit, Lord, today. We pray, Lord, for Jeanette. We pray, God, that you would touch her body, bring healing. We come against this cancer in the name of Jesus, and we pray, God, that you would move and minister to her. For by your stripes she is made whole, and we thank you for what you're going to do, for the healing touch that you're bringing even now. Lord, we give you praise. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our lives. Your will be accomplished in each and every one of us. And we give to you all praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. God's good. Amen. Um, I just want to thank the Lord for his presence, for his peace and the comfort of his spirit. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for praying. Denise is just... Um, Couldn't take me anymore. No. <laughs> she had a lot of pain last night and was unable to sleep. And uh, it's her other hip. Uh, so just remember her in prayer. Um, and uh, Edward was up and getting ready for service this morning and got sick. So please remember him in your prayers. And I want to say a special thank you today. To uh, Andre, Austin, and Andy for all their work in getting our new computer and program up and running. I don't know if you noticed this morning, but we're actually using the full screen on the TV. Uh, Andre, if you don't, yeah, that's a picture from Israel. You remember when we did the Israel slides back? A few months ago when they were about this big. So Austin told me yesterday I was going to have to redo the whole thing because they can actually see the slides. <laughs> but it's just awesome and, and we appreciate all the, the hard work. It's taken us a little bit of time and, and we're still not completely there. There's a couple of other things we got to do and tweak it, but it's up and running and I want to thank you guys for your donations that uh, helped us to be able to get it and update the program. And we actually got um, backgrounds and, and different things and we can actually um, connect with the programs that we need to connect with now. So thank you guys for your, your giving and your donation and thank you guys for all your hard work in making that work. So thank you. I told them that they needed to work on making me look better, but they said they had no control over that. It was just what's on the screen. So, um, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, this morning, I want to talk to you about something that, that I truly believe. You know, Jesus is coming. I'm...
33 and a half times 2. Um, and I've heard that my whole life. Jesus is coming. Some of you are a little bit older than I am, and you've heard it all your life. But he is. And never in the scope of my lifetime have I ever felt like his coming was so much at hand. Now, I'm not saying he's coming today or tomorrow. And a few months or a few weeks ago, I said that I believe that the Feast of Israel or prophetic calendar, if you look at how they correspond with events, and, and I believe that the one that is still yet to happen will happen. I believe it will happen in the fall. That's how I was the opinion. I didn't say Jesus was coming this fall. I don't know when he's coming. It could be today. And even if it's not today, he could call for me. So the Bible teaches us that we're supposed to be ready. Jesus, when he um, was talking to his disciples, he carried them up to Caesarea Philippi. And he asked them, who do men say that I am? And of course, you know the discourse, and Peter tells him, you're, you're the son of God. And, and I shared with you several months ago that that was done at a place where uh, there were many idols and many false gods and, and temples that had been built and where they believed that the pathway, gateway to hell was uh, the god of Pan uh, was supposed to have a temple there. And Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am in the midst of all this? And it's in that region, which is, if you, Jerusalem is here, Sea of Galilee is here, Caesarea Philippi is up here. And it is in that region that the events that I want to talk to you about today happen. Most people believe that it was on Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is about 9,200 feet above sea level. It's the highest mountain in that region. Uh, it is just north of Caesarea Philippi and has snow on it a lot. Um, so Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on the mountain with him. And I have to believe that the disciples were just like you and I, just like people today. Um, I know that there were some of the disciples that had this feeling of, what's so special about Pete, Jim, and John? Why is it always Pete, Jim, and John? Pete, Jim, and John. I'm so tired of hearing Pete, Jim, and John. But Jesus had these three that was even closer to him than all the others. And it's not so much, but hey, it's, look at your own life. You have a lot of acquaintances. You have friends. But then you have some that are truly close to you. Uh, it's not that you don't love everybody. That's, that's true. But it's for some reason, he takes these three under his wing even more and 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 imparts to them even more than he does to the others. In Luke chapter 9, these words are recorded. And this is just after he's asked Peter, or asked the disciples who he is. They're in the region of Caesarea Philippi. And they believe that it happens there at Mount Hermon, uh, just north of Caesarea, or Caesarea Philippi. Verse 28 says, Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah who appeared in glory and spoke of his decrease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep, 
And when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened as they were parting from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearing as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of these things they had seen. Now this is generally referred to as the Mount of Transfiguration. And Pete, Jim, and John heard it and saw it. And they, coming to themselves, Peter says, oh, we ought to build three tabernacles now. And the Bible says he didn't know what he was saying. I am fully convinced that one of the reasons that when Moses died and God buried him, no one knows where, it was for this specific reason. Because had they known where he was buried, it would have been become a shrine to him. And, and that's not the purpose. If you'll remember back to the words that I was just sharing with you before I read these scriptures, that Jesus in Caesarea Philippi asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And, and they, Peter tells them, you're, you're the son of God. And he says that some of you will not die before you see the kingdom. And it's been a point of, of how, how can he say this? Because we know they all died and Jesus has not come yet. But on that mountain, they saw the future of what was coming. And they saw the transfiguration of Jesus in his angelic glorified being. His face glows, he's glistening, he's clothed in white. Uh, it, it, is, it is referencing all of the things of, of who he is. And it foreshadows the second coming of Jesus. The Bible tells us that Christ is coming and his return is unexpected. In other words, it's coming when we don't expect it. We don't know when he's coming. Luke chapter 12, verse 40 says, You also must be ready at the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. We don't, we don't know when he's coming. But the Bible says, God's not slack concerning his promises. He is coming, but he's delaying for a purpose so that as many people as possible can be saved. Because, listen, the, the heart of God is that all be saved. But it's not going to happen. Some are not going to believe. Some are not going to trust. But the coming of Jesus is going to be at a time that is unexpected, when we're not watching for him. If you look back at the parables of Jesus, and he tells them, had the servants known when the master of the house was coming, they would have been ready. We don't know when he's coming. He's coming suddenly. The Bible calls it in the twinkling of an eye. How fast can you bat your eye? There's not going to be warning. There's not going to be time to get ready. There's not going to, oh, here he comes. i got to make everything right before you get. No, it's, and it's over. We could be sitting here on a Sunday morning, and all of a sudden, the 
We're gone. That quick. It's going to be an unexpected, quick return. Now, there's coming a day when every eye is going to be holding. And you see, the second coming of Jesus is broken up in two parts. One part is he comes to receive those that are his and he takes us with him. Second part is when he comes and every eye beholds him. And he puts his foot on the Mount of Olives and he goes through the Kidron Valley and he goes through the Eastern Gate and he establishes his kingdom on this earth and he rules for a thousand years the millennial reign. Every eye will behold him. But in his first coming, it's going to be quick. It's going to be that quick. And we're gone. And how are you going to explain that millions of people are gone that quick? The aliens come. I'm not talking about the ones coming over the southern border. I'm talking about those little green men. I don't know how you explain it, but it's going to throw the world into a frenzy, and it's going to throw this world into a tribulation time like we've never seen or understood or heard of. You think it's bad now, or well, this is bad compared to what's coming. People say, well, if I miss it, I'll just make my, I'll, I'll believe in Jesus, and I'll get, listen, if you can't live for him now, how are you going to live for him then? He's coming. The whole description of Christ in the mountain of transfiguration speaks of his heavenly kingship, which he will assume upon his second return. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 3 says, Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart from themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth could whiten him. He's transfigured. And he, what they see speaks of what's coming and what's going to be. Revelation chapter 19, verses 13 and 14 says, He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And his armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. The whole idea of the, of the purity of the white, of the gleaming of, that's, that's what's coming. Peter, James, and John saw a glimpse of what's coming, what is ahead. On that mountain of transfiguration, there were two that appeared with Jesus from the Old Testament. Old Testament personalities who were standing with Jesus talking with him. Moses and Elijah. The first was Moses. Now, let me couple of things I, I want to point out here. Moses is representative of those who have died in the Lord and will be raised to meet Christ in the air at his return. Because Moses died and the Bible says the Lord buried him. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a command shout and the voice of the archangel 
and with a trumpet the call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Man, what a day. When I do a, a funeral service and we go to the cemetery, um, I tell people, look, this is one of the saddest places on the face of the earth today. But one day, this place is going to be a place of victory. Because those who know Jesus, we're coming out. And let me, let me just share this. That, that grave is gone. There's a cemetery here that I, I found several years ago that has a Revolutionary War hero buried in it. And, and uh, at least when I was standing there looking at it, I, 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 I'm fascinated with things like that. Um, and I told Denise, I said, we do realize that under this headstone, the Bible says that dust is going back to dust. We're just made of dust. We're just dirt. And when we die, this old carcass is going to dust. And I'm not, um, I'm not advocating one way or the other. Some people today, um, upon their death, want to be cremated, which I'm going to tell you, that's what I'm planning to do. And people say, oh, no, no. There's got to be something in the ground to come out. Let me tell you something. There's nothing in that ground now. And all cremation does is speed up the process of what's going to happen. And I'm not, I'm not advocating it. That's a personal decision, and I don't care which way you go with that. That's totally your call. But can I tell you something? The people who have died in war, the people that have... That, 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 there's nothing to put back to get... Let me tell you, when Jesus comes and the trumpet sounds, they're coming up. And I tell you what I'm saying. Do you understand that that it's not it's not what went into that ground that's coming out? There's a the spirit is with the Lord. To be absent from the body, present with the Lord. And the glorified body is not what I was. It's what I'm going to be. And I don't know yet, as John said, I don't know what we're going to be. But when we see Jesus, we're going to be like him. And I don't know if that means we're going to be ripped with muscles or if we're going to be fluffy. I don't know. But it's okay. Either way. Because what a day that's going to be. When the Spirit and the glorified being are rejoined together and we are with the Lord. And Moses represented those because Moses died and was buried. Yet he appears with Jesus. And he's standing there and he's glowing. Clothed in white raiment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The second person was Elijah. And Elijah didn't die. You know, there's only two people in Scripture that didn't die. One of them was Elijah. The other one was Enoch. The Bible says he walked with God and was not. He's gone. And there are some, well, let me, I'll get to that in just a minute. So the second person is Elijah. He didn't die. He was taken into heaven alive. And he represents those who will be alive at the coming of the Lord and who will be changed as they also are taken up with Jesus. But 1 
Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and we who are living will also be transformed. Whew. You know what that means? I'm not going like this. My old bald head's not going there. Now, I don't know how much hair I'll have. I may be slick in it. I don't care. But this is, flesh and blood's not going. That's what the Bible says. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. This is not what's going. We're going to be transformed in a moment. That quick. That sure beats all them hours. I ain't knocking that. I'm just saying it beats it. The Bible says we're caught up. We're changed. We're transformed. It's gone. We're gone. Now, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7 says, Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, then we will be with the Lord forever. Hello? Forever. 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 It will be worth it. I don't think it's any coincidence that the two people standing there on that mountain with Jesus was Moses and Elijah. Moses having died and having been buried, representing those that have, have gone to sleep, have been put in the ground, but they're alive and will be made alive. And those who are alive and yet at that moment will be changed and transformed. And it represents all of those that are going People say, well, you know, you know, well, the last two people that are mentioned in the Old Testament, in Malachi chapter 4, Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. There are many who believe in Revelation that the two witnesses that come and are testifying of Jesus Christ are Moses and Elijah, and they are destroyed, they're killed, and they lie in the streets. And then they're resurrected. Some people say, no, it can't. It can't be Moses because uh, he died. You know, there are other people in the Bible that's died twice. Lazarus died twice. Didn't he? Jesus raised him. There was the daughter that Jesus raised from the dead. The Dwight wife. It's okay. Enoch. Why, why would he not be one? But you see, Enoch was before the flood. Enoch was before the law was given. Enoch has no... 
nothing in common with Israel because all of that happens after Enoch. Moses and Elijah. Can Elijah come twice? Some say that John the Baptist was Elijah. I think Jesus said that. But anyway. I believe those two witnesses will be Moses and Elijah. And they will cry out. But for today, I want us to realize they represent you and I. They represent those who have died, but they're coming up out of that ground. And those who are alive that is coming, and they're transformed. We're going. We're going. We're going. Get ready. We're going. Are you ready? I don't know when Jesus is coming. I know that there's been a lot of things in the last few years that have been answered for me. I never believed that this world could be controlled until we went through the COVID thing. And I saw a lot of things that I thought, wow, that's how quickly it can happen. It's only been in this generation that all the things that are said in the scriptures can actually come to pass. Can happen. When you read the book of Ezekiel and you see the war and you see it describes men standing there and their flesh melting from their bones. That sounds just like an atomic blast that obliterates everything. When those two witnesses are killed in the streets of Jerusalem and their bodies are lying there the Bible says the whole world sees them. Couldn't happen before this generation. You know, it's, it's hard for me to fathom this because I, I've grown up in a time when, when we could see around the world. But do you realize that in 1941, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, couldn't see what was going on. All, all they could go by was the phone calls that they could get or the telegraph machine that would send messages. They didn't know all that was happening. They didn't know the scope of what was happening. But today we can see it that quick. If you'll remember, I'm sorry, this is just funny to me, and it's not funny. But when Bush invades and CNN's on the beach going, here they come. Right. We're watching it happen. That didn't happen just in 1941. It was hard for me to fathom that that my my kids when my kids were growing up they didn't understand what records were. I'm going rip you on that record. A 45? I thought it was a gun. Or we used to have a stack of 45s on a turntable. And it's weak. And the seek and find was you move the needle over. Huh? I was my dad's remote control. He said, get it up and turn it up. Turn it to channel two. Two, five, and eleven is what we had. That was it. That was all. 
rabbit ears, and one furry. And it had a piece of tin foil on the end of it because it got a little better reception. And if you grabbed hold to it, it really, oh, oh, that's it, stand right there. I'm going, I want to say that. Oh, that, that, that's good. No, most, most kids today have never had the enjoyment of having a wall telephone with a 15 foot cord that they can carry to their bedroom and shut the door. And a rotary dial. And if your parents wanted to know where you were, all they did was follow the cord all the way down the hall. Party line. Yeah, get Denise to tell you about her party line days. Her and her cousin would get on and then the ladies would go, your kids on this phone again. I'm just saying, life has changed so much in our lifetimes. It's unreal. I remember Hearing people talk about cable TV and people paying for it. I'm going, why would you pay for something you get for free? And now I'm paying for it. <laughs> huh? Right. And our bottle of water was a water hose. I drank many of let the bucket down. My grandparents had a well. Pull it up. Had a, a dipper. Ladle. We called it a dipper. Hang it at the well. Pull that water up. Oh man, it was good and cool. Didn't taste like plastic. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm just. I'm trying to get us to see how quickly things have changed. Just since I've been here. Just since I, I came in 1995. They gave me a picture. Said, here, put this on. We need you to go call. And I remember the first time it went off. I was driving down Interstate 85 and that thing went off and I thought something had fallen in the seat. It was just And if they really needed you bad, they put 911 on. And the first cell phone I ever purchased was a bag phone. Felt like Dick Tracy. Now what Dick Tracy had, uh -huh. some of you got. I'm just simply saying, listen, that's how quickly things are changing today. And they say by the time we bought that computer, got it to this building, it's already outdated. I mean, get another for a long time. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's how quickly technology changes. Jesus is coming, folks. He's coming. He's coming. Get ready. He foreshadowed his coming and what it's going to be. And it's going to be glorious. Father, I just thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for this opportunity to come. And God, I just ask that you would impress upon our hearts. These moments on that mountain were not insignificant moments, but they were put there for us to be reminded of what is ahead and what is coming. Both the glory and both the realization that whether we go through death or whether we're still here when you come, the door is open and there is a way and there is a hope. And God, I pray that you would impress upon each and every one of us who 
who you are. You are God alone. There is none other. There is no other. There is no one like you. You cannot be compared. Help us. Help us to look to you today. Help us to trust you. Help us to believe in you. Hold on. Hold on. What is coming? I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me remind. Uh, let me share a couple of things. I know uh, I haven't done this in a couple of weeks. I, forget, I had it really bad last week and I forgot it. Rick, Rick and Glenn Pim's anniversary was the 6th of August, I think. Her birthday was last Tuesday, the 13th, I think. Um, when's y'all's anniversary? Wednesday. It's coming Wednesday. Five years, right? <laughs> Something like that. How long has it been? 31 years. 31 years old. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else's birthday or anniversary? I know uh, Destiny had a birthday the 16th. Or was that Friday? Any other? When? The 9th of August? Anybody else? Anniversary? Anybody want to take everybody out for lunch? <laughs> I just want to encourage you. As I was thinking about this this week, and uh, I had a picture which we couldn't get up this morning because of uh, the change over to the new computer and I forgot something that we needed. Um, but when I was looking at Mount Hermon and it was just covered in snow and I thought about the scenes of just covered in snow and how everything just looks you know, if the sun's glistening off of it or lights are reflecting on it. I mean, it's just how it, and that's the way I pictured that Jesus looked to the disciples when he was transfigured, that, that just gleaming glitter reflecting the light. Because you see, that's what Adam and Eve were clothed in before the fall was the reflection of the light that was given off of God. Moses even had to cover his face when he received the law because his face was shining because he'd been in God's presence. And I thought, you know what? We need to get in his presence so we can shine. So he can shine through us to this world. Because Jesus is coming. Amen? Amen. And if you got anything, I don't have any of your announcements. Everybody knows that, that hey, just for giggles, put up the the, the uh, Support the church just so it fills the whole screen. Uh, continue to support, continue to give. 
thank those of you who are so faithful in the year. Thank you guys. Um, we couldn't exist if it wasn't for your faithfulness and for God's faithfulness in our people. So God is good. Okay? Um, hey, Austin, put up that video real quick of the Sea of Galilee. I just wonder if I see it. <laughs> That's the Sea of Galilee looking across to Capernaum. Way off each other is now. Would you stand with us? Before you leave today, turn to somebody and say, I just want you to know I want to see you there. I want to see you there. Let's get ready. Jesus is coming. Lord bless you. We'll see you this week. Continue to bless the Lord and walk with him.